welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm here today with an art video. I know my my upload schedule is a little a little crazy. Mama Bear, Mama Bear wants what she wants. The last video I posted didn't do very well, but it was okay because me and my friends had fun. Kitchen at 3 a.m. <laughs> um, and sometimes the views, subscribers, and money is the ones we make along the way. Okay, I know you guys are like Bianca. We don't care about your friends. We just want to see the guys making out. And girl, I got you. Cause today, not only am I gonna show you the guy, not only am I gonna show you the guys making out, honey. No, I'm gonna teach you how to draw them. Ah, aren't you excited? I know I am. Today, oh, I just showed you my side profile. Fuck, my nails don't match. Today, I'm gonna be showing you not how to draw things, but more cause girl, I could show you how to draw all the all the all the, all the long day, you know, but it kind of takes a certain skill level to draw anything that you want, right? I can't paint a Van Gogh piece. I can't just look at the Van Gogh piece, or Van Gogh can't just like be like, okay, now you do a line here, now you do a line here, now you do. like. Of course, I do lines all the time, but not those. So I'm not gonna show you how to draw it. I'm going to show you kind of how to build your skill level. A lot of this does have to do with coloring. It's not even about drawing. It's about like how to get the detail and the coloring and the smoothness you want in your work. Because I get a lot of people asking me, what pencil do you use? What markers do you use? And then I say, oh, I just use like a pencil from like Walmart. It's nothing special. It is literally just how I use it. Like the the weight that you put on your hand you know or people always tell me you have such confident lines um it comes from knowing what you want to draw having that memory bank in your head you are able to see it and then put it on paper there's no like there's no miscommunication from brain to hand you know what i mean <laughs> basically it just i'm gonna show you how to i'm gonna show you how i'm gonna give you examples okay for you visual learners for you know you had to read you know the comic book people i'm here for you i understand not being able to comprehend something after reading it about eight times i get that how to solve problems how to problem solve okay that's a big thing you got an issue don't just give up on your art piece okay you can make it happen or else you can't post that day. And if you don't post that day, how are you gonna get that satisfaction from the from the validation of others? Um. Anyways, stop yapping and uh, make it happen. As you guys know, I don't even have a desk anymore. So step number one, <laughs> throw your desk away. We gotta get all our supplies. This shot was supposed to be aesthetic, but you're just, you're just looking at my ass. I got the tripod. Welcome back to the carpet. Okay, so for today, today, so for today, we're gonna be using this freaking classic. Um, I do have a sketchbook that I'm ready to do like a sketchbook tour on basically. I just have to fill a couple more things in. But this one is the prime example for what I want to show you guys. Um, so let's just get into it. This is the cover. I used to get a lot of questions about my covers and now I don't really. Mama Bear needs her monster energy. <laughs> so people, I used to get a lot of questions for uh, sketchbook covers because my one of my favorite parts about sketchbooks is doing the sketchbook cover. Even now with my little broke ass sketchbooks because I can't afford these Crescent Render sketchbooks anymore and they obviously aren't getting the message that I would sponsor them. I got these, they were gifted to me. You can still be aesthetic and be broke. My current sketchbook and that's the cover for it. If you've been watching me for a while, you'll, you might recognize that these are the same books I used in seventh grade. So it is slightly nostalgic to be using these ones, you know, just a little, little sneak peek. But this one is, oh my god, this is just one of my favorite books I've, I've done. You can actually go watch the sketchbook tour in a different video. Okay, here's my first note. Um, aside from all this 
being um just pencil I did want to start coloring again it was the summer and I really want to start coloring again so this was the first thing I colored and I hadn't colored in a while and you can absolutely see that fact in this drawing this here shows um two things I want to tell you you need to test all your colors first before you do something like draw something you're going into coloring something and you're planning it out you need to have a plan it's just like an essay when they tell you you need to have the outline for the essay i obviously did not do that i there were words here and i colored it black and i wasn't planning on coloring it black and i had to literally redraw his head and stick it on here you can't really see it which is good but i literally had to redo his whole head because i had messed it up the first time with not planning it out and also the red line art looked so bad you'll see that i'm gonna show you an old sketchbook that i also did a sketchbook tour on um to compare it because there is i did redo some drawings but this right here is such a good example of what not to do i didn't i ended up not liking the red fine liner right the red micron 0 0.5 and which is a very good micron by the way if you want to do like blood and stuff, I, I recommend it. For for at least for my style, I would not use it to outline anymore. I did for a long time, but now I look back on it and it just does not look good. I like using the brown fine liners for skin now. Um, it looks far more natural. Like no matter how pale your character is, the brown one is gonna look better. But for Paul Dano here, <laughs> um, it was not working, so I went over it. And brown liner so then it started to look a little weird it started to look a little muddy I didn't test the skin tone that I gave him before using it I just you know I just did whatever I wanted I thought I knew what I was doing and I made his skin like bright red because oh hoo they're very good oh hoo is the marker I'm using they are very very good but obviously if you're not using the right colors for what you want to draw it's not gonna look good so then I try and go over it in the skin tone that I'm using up here because then I actually go and test my color and then I try and go over the red skin tone in this new skin tone, and it doesn't look great. Right. And so now you have ruined what was once one of your favorite sketches on the page. So it's better to be safe than sorry when you're coloring and just plan it out beforehand. You're going to see that as I go further on in this book, I started planning more and more and more and more. It even helps to write it down, like what you want, what color to be, you know, because... I forget sometimes and I totally color over something that I wasn't supposed to color over and I was supposed to leave a different color and then it looks like every other thing I've ever drawn and I, there's no experimentation going on. I wrote down right here weird shading. Um, I don't like the red for his blush being used. It might not transfer on camera but it looks bad really bad in real life. Highlights on his hair look really weird. I, brown if you have brown hair your highlights just aren't going to be white okay. Um, and I do that because I'm lazy. Because I'm lazy, I don't want to try and find a color that's going to blend with what I assume I picked like a random color because I know what blends with what I use for his hair now. For the Riddler, when I draw the Riddler, I always use the pastel. There's from the pastel set, there is buttercup yellow, and then from the skin tone set, there is a buttercup yellow, and I always blend those two. And then sometimes, like, I'll, I'll put if it's a bigger art piece, then I will. Uh, incorporate more shading but for little things like this two colors is really all that's needed and I only used one so that was another mistake I made be an example of what not to do at least if you're trying to color like me um, if you want a similar coloring style um, because people do like my coloring style um, even my old one which sucked people really liked it uh, which is nice but if you want what not to do do not do this. Okay, here's an example of kind of what to do. This one also has bad things about it, you know. This was my first, um, like, I was really excited, really, really excited to color this. Like, I just sketched it out. I, I wasn't even planning on coloring anything, and um, I, I was just like, wow, I really want to color that. But it was a big leap for me, you know, because I just messed up the other thing that I liked, and uh, I was very scared. So I planned and I was very cautious about what I was using. And this is actually one of my favorite drawings of Anatoly. Um, yeah, I, th I think the creators of Cooking Companions, the video game, actually did see it. Um, but you know what's funny? Oh my god. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. 
I reached out to the Cooking Companions people, right? Oh, girl. It's so embarrassing. I reached out and they were like, oh, cool. We'll send you like, we'll send you a, um, uh, when the new game comes out, we'll send you a version early. Holy shit, right? Cooking Companions, the the uh, video game company, Dr Dear Dream Studios, that I've loved since the very beginning of their first video game, right? And I, I uh, it should be a very ecstatic thing, you know? And then I'm I have to be like, um, I was too scared to tell them I don't ha I don't even own a computer. Nonetheless, would you guys watch me play freaking Cooking Companions? Guy, you can say, oh, I'd watch you play a video game. No, you wouldn't, girl. No, you wouldn't. Just be honest. So I'm trying to tell them, I'm trying to be like, no one's going to sit and watch me play a video game. But I was, I tried, I was so, I had this long ass message and they never even saw it. But I was like, hey, if you, if you ever release merch, I can, like, I can totally advertise that for you. Like I will totally, like my audience will totally get it, you know, but playing a video game, I just don't know. And also my broke ass doesn't own a computer. Anyways, that's my story time about cooking companions i almost got to get their new game early but i had to deny um anyway anyway stop crying so one thing i want to say about this is i used all the same stuff here right i used well some of it but um some i didn't have i didn't use gel pens in that other drawing but here is all the same markers the same microns the other one looks so bad and this one looks good i i, I know it's it's um relative but this one to me at least looks good even though it's the same markers that's what i'm saying like we can all have the same markers it's just what you do with it you know and I, I, that seems obvious but it really to some people just is not they think if they buy the thing then their automat their art is automatically gonna look like the other person's you know like that's why people ask me what sketchbook what pencil and i'm like girl walmart brand you know like it it is not all in the materials you can be a brokey and still be an amazing artist yeah anyway anyway shut up bianca glitter gel pens were used arteza i should hold on let me i have an example actually right next to me to be fair I... these were also a gift i did not pay for these um not they weren't sent to me by the company holy shit arteza if you want to send me if you want to send me anything i will literally i can't say that just know I would do anything. My these are Arteza, and to be fair, their pens did um start changing colors for some reason. Um, they started off as blue, like all the pastel colors that were supposed to be like solid block pastel colors. All the pastel ones did start turning into different colors. I think like pink turned into green, and blue turned into what looks like orange. So they were not supposed to like come, they were not multicolored, they weren't supposed to come that way. But they started changing. So if you do get those, there is a chance they could start freaking uh, changing colors, okay? But those were used for the blood. I love the red Arteza, um, the red Arteza pen. It's so good for blood. I love it so much. But of course, I layer a lot. That's one thing you're going to see a lot of layering, especially when I'm doing like gore and stuff like that. Um, I know this probably seems obvious again, but for this, um, what did I write down? There's another one that I'm going to talk about where I talk more about that, so I guess I'll save that. But, um, white gel pens, this is one example. People, one mark of my art that people, like, you'll notice it's my art from, like, that one TikTok trend that was, uh, back a while ago, is the freaking sweat, okay? <laughs> my characters are always sweating, or something's, like, there's always some some liquid protruding you know and white gel pens are just the funnest thing ever and I think that's part of why you know aside from it you know uh, being intriguing to audiences you know um I think it just is so fun to do all those little details and it makes it look more animated in a way you know it makes it look a little crisper when you can put a solid white on top of another solid color Oh, that's another thing I was going to say. You can always add more. Girl, you can't take back. So what I'm saying is be, like I said before, be risky. Don't be risky. <laughs> Don't be risky. I mean, I'll, I'll the opposite. Do not be risky with your art, okay? You can always try new things. But if you are doing a project like this, like not a project, girl, 
if you're doing a piece that you don't want to mess up, just always remember, I always think about this as one of those things that people say that stick with me, you can always put more in, you cannot take it out, you know? So just be careful. It'll make your art look so much better if you're not just layering and covering mistakes that you make. Um, here we have, oh, you know, you can, if you go watch the tour of the sketchbook, you can actually see all of this uncover. Stupid. Um, okay. Blonde hair with white highlights. Lazy! Lazy, why are you being lazy? It still doesn't sit right with me. Why do I do that? Is white, like, white, I just feel like white is not a natural freaking highlight for blonde. Like, I should have just went lighter, but I don't know, I just get so scared of it looking like you know that after your marker has dried and then you go over it and then it literally just looks like a splotch and it doesn't blend because it's because it's dried well that is what i'm scared to look like um that's what i'm scared to look like and also kyoya looks so stupid here i just want to say that his hair over detailed there shouldn't have been like four purples in his hair and yeah his face is ugly um his face ain't given apples Leon looks stupid. Yeah, Kyoya hair has too much detail. Okay, so for this, I have a lot to say about her. A lot of critiques, okay? I'm telling you guys what not to do. You might have came here for things to do. I'm telling you what not to do. Wish I had tried different colors for Kyoya's outfit. I literally just did the first markers I saw. Never do this. Always plan. I went over this cardigan like 40 times to the point where I couldn't even shade it because I had gone over it in so many grays, so many purples, because I kept trying to cover up what I thought was a mistake with this outfit. If I could redo this outfit, it would probably still, I'd probably still end up making it gray and purple because those are curious colors, but I feel like it would have been better to make his outfit darker. Here, let me show you guys. Hold on. I'm gonna get annoying real quick. So in this new sketchbook, I did do colored versions of their outfits. So see how his outfit has gone from this to this. And then Kyoya's outfit has gone from this to this. One, I tried to make their outfits match their personality a little better. And two, because it needs to be simplistic enough to where you can just remember, like a cartoon character, okay? Do you think freaking total drama characters have 40 different colors in their outfits? No. There's at least maybe two or three iconic colors and that's what you that's what makes you think of them, you know? So just kind of think about it like like okay, don't even think about color, right? Think do I want dark pants and a light shirt or do I want a light shirt and dark pants? Think about it like that and then think about color. Okay, and then if one character like Tomiki, dark shirt, light pants, then maybe switch it around. Kyoya, light pants, dark shirt. You know what I mean? And things like that, that contrast your characters, that make them, but still like tie them together in some way, is what's going to make your art look, it's going to make it look like um together. It's going to make it look uh symmetrical in a way. It, 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 it just, it's going to make it look better. Trust me, if you plan and you... You don't have to make your characters match. Like, Tomiki and Kyoya, they're both kind of wearing purple. But Ta Kyoya's shirt is actually a red-gray, while Tomiki's shirt is a violet. Um, Kyoya's pants are gray, and Tomiki's pants are green. And I gave Tomiki those gold and green and brown colors because they kind of go with his personality a little more, and they go with his... Um, they kind of they don't really go with his skin tone because Tomiki is a lighter character than Kyoya. At least when I color them, I think they are, and I see a lot of other people they color them because Tomiki is like he is half French, you know. Um, I haven't watched that show in so long, so if I'm wrong, just correct me. But um, they do have different skin tones. I think Kyoya looks better in silver, and Tomiki looks better in gold. They have matching necklaces. That's one of those things that makes them look together in a drawing. I did give them, because, you know, guys, I, I'm delusional, okay? So, like, they they wear matching necklaces because they're just such best friends. And um, these necklaces are matching, but one is silver and one is gold, okay? Sorry if I'm, like, schizo-posting, like, schizo-rambling. 
you know, I, that's, that's just little things that if you want your art to, like, feel more, I don't know, concise or, like, consistent one of those things you can do well people will comment and be like oh my gosh the amount of character interaction like how do you draw character interaction it's to me it's easy because really in my head it's just making two people kind of contrast each other they they are obviously together but they're they're gonna they're gonna be pulling away from each other you know what i mean nobody knows what you mean Bianca. shut up shut up girl if you don't get your if you don't get your inconsistent black outlining out of here, why is his hand- why is- why is this freaking outlined in black but his belt isn't? Huh? Huh? This is okay. This is okay. I like- I obviously right here got upset and just, um, colored all of this purple. Because I was trying to put, like I said before, like 40 different colors in Kyoya's hair. It, it's one highlight. Just make it purple. Um... This might be obvious, but you don't have to have a darker color. Just layer the same one. Yeah. Um, if you're like, oh, I can't make that pink because I don't have a darker pink to do the shading. Yeah, you can. You can. It's not going to look like, you know, it's not going to look as if you had a bunch of blending and stuff. But you can do it. I only have like one pink. The pastel set of Ohuhu's does come with a bunch of pinks, but... The pastels for who, or at least the set I have from the year I have, um, they're like neon sometimes. <laughs> like it low-key neon. Like the pink from the pink set is what's up here and up here. That's like salmon to me. Like girl, call that salmon. Call it what it is. That's not light pink. That's that's salmon. Um, here is a pretty good example of what to do. I wrote down here, um, trying to use anything but black aside from the outline because if you're using a black outline to make your character stand out then you're not going to want of other black you're you're not going to want a bunch of other black things in the drawing so you know not making the letters on the shirt black and just taking the extra second to find a darker blue or his bed sheets not being black making them plaid and then taking the extra second to find colors that would make a plaid really bring a lot to the drawing the dark brown for the background and the pale colors contrast not only with marshall's hair for his normal design but with the explosion yes using cooler colors to make the character stand out from the orange in the background very deep thinking bianca oh i love this page and then there's just the riddler i have nothing to say but about him okay 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 Time to talk about the sketchbook. I have a lot to say about the Christmas render. I think coloring like this, it almost looks freaking animated, which is what I loved about the sketchbook. You you draw on here, girl, and it, depending on your skill set, of course, looks clean. And depending on what you want to draw, because some people don't want to draw clean freaking character design and like, you know what I mean? Like not everyone wants to do like the cartoon thing. They want to be messy. But, um, if you want to draw like this, this is the perfect sketchbook for it. And sure, it's always sold out on every single storefront and it never gets restocked and hasn't been restocked since 2021. And we, I, and Ultra May Art definitely sold all of them out and made them a shit ton of money. But that doesn't matter. I think it's a really good sketchbook. It holds product really well. But if you do use graphite, the graphite is going to rub off. And people say, um, we'll just use hairspray. And I used to do that. Um, I used to do that. But then, obviously, you can't go back and change it. Like, if you, a couple days later, if you're like, ah, oh, that thing was ugly, you know. You can't really go back and change it. So, I didn't really like that. I did have a Crescent Render sketchbook where I used, um, hairspray in it. And that's a really old one. And, uh, I did use hairspray on those sketches. And it does turn the paper yellow for a second. One thing that I think Crescent Render sketchbooks don't really handle well is water. So like spraying that on there, it did make it look really weird. But eventually it does dry 
clear kind of so if you're going to use hairspray on your sketches in crescent render then go ahead that is if you can find a crescent render book crescent render sketchbooks usually cost 25 to 30 dollars there might be resellers but if you do buy from a reseller that's very potent that's that has the potential to get very 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 expensive um i haven't really found another sketchbook that is like um crescent render i know there are other sketchbooks that make non-bleed through paper that's another thing about this sketchbook that's so good is that it is non-bleed through there is nothing that is going to come through to the other side see i drew this and on the other side i drew this and that's one of the very big luxuries of having a sketchbook like this. I draw on sketchbooks like this for so long. And then I go to the Walmart sketchbooks and I'm like, oh my god. I need my main hoe back. I do not like these side hoes. Yeah. That's one thing is that this is going to rub off. But to be fair, they didn't really make this book for sketching. They made it for people that color. Oh lord, I read a lot about this. Jesus. Cheap watercolor markers are so good for blood i know we all overlook them right and i'm not trying to be like guys don't overlook but I'm, I'm i'm literally just saying you could go anywhere right now and find hold on do i have it i forgot i'm supposed to show you guys what i'm talking about oopsie so here's an example okay of three types of markers that i use all the time i have used this marker since seventh grade i will be a junior this year <laughs> So I've used this marker since seventh grade. You can see the thing is all off. Um, and it has lasted that long. It is, fr it's from a set, like a rainbow set of watercolor markers. The tip is busted because I would use it for blood all the time. Um, so that is one. If I knew the brand, I would tell you there is a little, maybe you guys notice it and can put it in the comments um this is a tombow okay so admittedly maybe a little more pricey but i believe it did come in a set this is the tombow abt pro um it is alcohol based okay so it has the potential to blend with markers it is double-sided of course i love the tombow double-sided ones um i use this for a base for blood all the time especially when i'm using alcohol markers and i'm scared to put a different type of marker with it um but let me show you another example of me layering this marker it's actually very very recent so i drew this um yesterday actually um it's jake weber and johnny gilbert and i this marker is so bright such a bright red right but I put it on top of this. Okay, so I for his jacket, I used a green gray from the pastel set. And then I used some sort of other gray that had a green like tinge to it. It didn't have green in the name, but that shit was green. And so I put it over there. Um, and so I have, I then I put this on top of it, right? And because it's already so bright um, and it went to the alcohol marker, it kind of blended out, but that's what I wanted it to do because it's supposed to be like faded fake blood on his jacket. So I put it on there, right? And then I would layer it a little bit more, a little bit more. Girl, what was I saying? Um, oh my God. So my friend just asked me to play Roblox. So. Then I, I was layering it with, uh, what I did a lot of this with. Okay guys, don't get mad. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. I know I was just talking about how you can use cheap stuff. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. No, I know, I know. This is literally, I'm a class trader. I'm a class trader. My kind shouldn't be using these. Girl, we don't use these in this house. I'm sorry, girl, unless you want to send me a hundred pack, I cannot rep you. You are just not it. Like, you're just not it. Like, I got this, again, as a gift. I am so very lucky to get things as a gift. A lot of this was past gifts. This was a like a christmas gift in seventh grade okay this this tombow i bet i bought it with i yes i think i did buy it with a gift card to blick art uh blick art supplies um and i bought it online so that gift card was gifted to me and then this was gifted to me for christmas just this year so yeah i have been using these and i did use this Shit, bruh. Okay. I did use 
this not only for the pattern on his jacket, his hair, and Johnny's hair, and to shade the skin, but I also used it and I put it over the blood to make the blood uh, darker, and it literally just looks like old blood. So, yeah, just remember that when you're, like, doing- because people ask me, and you might be like, Bianca, why do you keep talking about blood? Um... It's because I get so many questions, especially when I did a lot of, like, um, fan art for emo bands. I got so many questions, and obviously, if someone was drawing blood and I wanted to know, I would freaking ask them, you know? But there, but people always say, oh, what did you do that with? And I could just never give a name, because I've been using this marker for, like, four years. Look. just just that okay and I'm gonna have to get a new one which is making me sad but it's it's so simple okay and you can achieve pretty much any look by just combining a bunch of stuff together that's a freaking Kovic marker or whatever so right here I wrote you can layer with brown to make it darker and blue gel pens to make bruises which is true when you blend at least Arteza I've never used I haven't used a lot of gel pens that was my first pack of gel pens to like have an own um but when I would mix the blue gel pen with the um, alcohol marker it would really just spread it around and it's such like a it's such a like a satisfying thing oh my gosh to watch it but um it really just like it's a weird effect, but that's why I love alcohol markers because you can just mix so much stuff with them and just make stuff look so grody. I love it. But um, admittedly, Anatoly is the reason I need to get a blue fine liner for his hair because I'm either going over it in brown and then going over it in a dark blue gel pen or I'm just going like, or it's just left brown. And it's like, it doesn't really, it might, I, I don't like it. Um, so yeah, I do need to get a blue fine liner. I only have red, gray, black, and brown. Again, with the inconsistent black outlines. Yes. Make your line art consistent, okay? I'm not talking about thickness and thinness, girl. I'm talking about black and brown. Um, again, this is why I need a blue fine liner. It's not a big deal that I'm going over his shoulders in black. It's just, like, it's the only thing that I did in black. Like, you know how people say you shouldn't shade in black? We're gonna get to that. But, I don't know. It just, I guess it makes them stick out. It's just everything else is so bright and, like, colorful. And then it's just, like, a black outline. Okie dokie. Here's my, here is what is my freaking favorite part of this video. Which might be the thumbnail. Like, it's just such a, I gotta show you it. So this is the redraw that I did. Remember I was talking about how I redrew some stuff? This is it. This is, oh, my other sketchbook. A different sketchbook from 14 years old. Okay, I was 14 years old. I'm 16 now. Um, happy birthday to me. Um, I turned 16 this December 13th. Um, and I was in eighth grade. So let me find the page I was freaking talking about. Okay. So <laughs> this, I also did this, I think, in my sketchbook tour of this video, but this is for another, a different reason. Um, look at this, okay? A lot of people did like this page, but it was so messy, so inconsistent, there's so much stuff, and not a lot of it is appealing to the eye. Not a lot of it really makes me look at it and go, oh, that's, like, so pleasing. This I look at, this I look at, and it is so pleasing to my eye. And can you, like, freaking spot the difference, okay? Now, I'm not saying you can never use black in any of your, like, art pieces ever again. There are obviously times that call for using black even when you're shading. I shade a lot with black when I draw Saw fan art because in the Saw movies, everything is so deeply contrasted between green, black, red, stuff like that. Um, so there's obviously times when you use it and times when you don't though. And I think here it didn't work. He looks like he works for McDonald's. So I thought a fun color 
would be purple. Um, that's one of the things. You guys ask where I get my ideas from and stuff. At the most random places, like MatPat, once in a game theory about like Five Nights at Freddy's or something, he was talking and he was like, in 8-bit games, they will they will make something that's black purple if it's in a black setting, right? So that's why you'll have, like, the purple guy was probably originally supposed to be just like a black shadow figure or something like that but because he was put on a black and white floor and it was for a video game they ended up making him purple so he would stand out against the um against the scenery so I was like okay purple is a substitute for black that's what you should know that's one thing I want you to know is that if you're ever going to use shade with black you could use purple you know not even a not even like a real skin tone like um like like using a darker version of what like any shade of character i think you can use purple I, when i draw the riddler i use a lot of green and purple because of like the joker and dc and stuff like that and i will shade his skin with purple um i think there is an example in here oh yeah this is fuck this is ugly but yeah, his orange jumpsuit, I would shade with purple, and I think it looked pretty good, you know. I really do like this page still. I don't like this page, but I do like this page. Um, But, yeah, I'm just really proud of these German drawings. I mean, look at the skin. That's another thing, guys, okay? Look at, I want you to look at this, okay? I used, again, I was using the red fine liners, and then I was going over parts in black, right? So I'm using these red fine liners, I'm using red alcohol markers, and I'm using a red colored pencil to go back over the red stuff on his skin, like the shading. And while it does look good for like a pinup girl, it really, I really didn't like it in the end. And so using more subtle colors and using a brown fine liner made him look far more realistic. It makes, like, if you're looking for a realistic, like, like I was. I was trying to be realistic by shading like that, by putting color in the skin and stuff where muscles would be. And it ended up looking like a free, like, like an anime character, you know? So I wanted to do something more, like, like, you could see the little muscles right here and stuff like that. And I just, I was really proud of how it looked. I don't have these, these, um, I've actually used all of my, like, <laughs> white people skin tones. <laughs> um, I've ran out of the ink of those markers because, you know, I draw so much. And the, the, the light shade and the pink shade are what's out. And so my art sadly doesn't look this good anymore. I would say the Ohuhus that I bought... No, I bought the who's that were gifted to me are far better than Copics when drawing skin tones. Oh my lord! And not only do you get a bigger assortment for less, but they're actually like they they, they don't um they're not misleading, you know. Um, I think I love Jerma's face here. I think the redness in his face, and of course it's because I know exactly where every single color on Jerma's face is because I stare at his face all day and stuff like that. And he has a very memorable face, you know. He's very handsome. He's, he's handsome. <laughs> I appreciate that. But he does have very like specific colors and specific areas that are usually highlighted by the light he sits in front of and stuff like that. So, um, colors like that would be easier than just looking at someone that you don't really know and trying to color them. Yellow I decided to shade with, I was proud of. His hair, and then again, you see me using the purple gel pen to get a solid color for shading. It really makes it stand out. Um, and then you see me using a glitter purple that is a very, very dark purple to do little, um, designs on his pants and things like that. And, um, coming with the fine liner to do buttons and again, the purple on his cat ears. So I'm not outlining the cat ears in black when they're not black. I am outlining them in purple because they're purple. You see the white gel pen come in with all of the little sweat marks and breathing 
here again too. I really do like his face over here. I was very, very, very careful. His arm looks very messed up. <laughs> it looks like I was rushing there. Um, especially with this dress, there's not a lot of, um, not a lot of different blues in there like there are in the Pac-Fan outfit. But, you know, I took creative liberations from the Miku figures they came from, which in the end did make it look better. So if you need to take liberations and take liberations. Okay. Here's another example of just like this sketchbook just like coming in clutch. Like, uh, I don't think I could draw this in a different sketchbook. Like it looks so clean and so solid and just nice. I love it. Um, again, look at you, you guys need to go out and buy white jelly roll pens because look, have you ever wanted to draw the stitching on your character's pants? I know you do, because you're just like me, I bet. So go uh, buy one and do it. There's $7, you know, and $7 is a lot of money to me. So if you, like, if you can't afford it, usually a colored gel pen set will have a white and have a black, but um, buying one separately that is a higher quality like that is probably a good idea. My love of white gel pens, shows here uh I'm trying to read I'm, I'm kind of illiterate it's a great way to add detail jelly roll is cheap enough the hair is blended very well here i stopped i stopped with the white highlights see see how much better this drawing looks because i didn't i didn't highlight his brown hair with white um do a little bit aside from the rim of the glasses like don't like do in the rim because the rim is the part you can't really see skin in at least when you're like drawing and um yeah just do his like just do cheeks a little bit you know it gives it a little something you know just been yapping for far too long give you guys something to fall asleep to oh my god wait the guys okay to all of you people who are falling asleep to this i need you to not look in the corner of your room because um if you look at it it will um it will hurt you just don't look at it don't look at it don't look at it don't open your eyes don't open your eyes okay because when you open your eyes it's gonna be right there <laughs> anyway Here's my Sinjin Drowning fan art. I know I have a bunch of Sinjin Drowning fans because I see you guys. I see you guys. I see you guys. Someone was like, oh my god, she's just like Weston Corey in my last video. And I was like, oh, oh, thank you. I'm very proud of this one. Not even for the content of the drawing, um, which is Weston and Kaylin as Robin and Raven from Teen Titans. But... Um, I'm proud of the freaking details. Oh my lord. Again, you're, I was, well, this isn't, I didn't like go over gel pen in a solid color. I literally just layered gel pen over and over and over again. I did not have a red alcohol marker. So I just used the gel pen. Same thing over here. And then I do have a black marker, but I decided to make her leotard, um, like, uh, shine. So I did it in a black glitter gel pen the back of her cape like the shading of her cape in the very very back this shading is just done with a solid purple this one is done with a solid glitter purple which is very much darker so because this is still like needs to be shaded but is in the light i'm making it lighter and then because this is just the very darkest the purple will get underneath her clothes i'm putting this here same thing i'm using this purple for the highlights of her leotard um because it's the lightest it will get and then same thing over here for his cape and his mask. I use the black again for his little thing on his shirt instead of like a micron, you know. Same thing for his cape. And um, I actually went over this in a pen. I don't, I don't know where it is right now. I would show you, but it was it's like one of those like freaking high class art materials. My mom is an artist, so she gave me one. And um. It's basically, like, you guys know those watercolor pens that, like, have the liquid in them and then it comes out of the brush? It's basically that, but it's glitter water and it dries and it, like, you can put it on top of anything. Like, I, like, literally went over, it was, like, pouring water on your freaking art piece, but I'm going over it and it's, like, going over it with a water pen, but nothing is moving and it just goes over, and it just goes over anything. It's so cool. It's so cool.
I remember growing up on art YouTube. I am not in the art TikTok community. I have no clue what's going on there. But I was very big in like 2016, 2017 art YouTube. Jesus Christ, I know. Um, but there was always this big importance on you have to learn how to draw things in the background. Now, am I going to tell you that I don't know how to draw a room? No, I know how to draw a room. I know how to draw background, stuff like that. But I think the importance put on them and like you're not a good artist unless the background of your drawing has like or like top 10 reasons why you'll never get into art school. You'll never get into an animation company because you don't know how to draw a freaking alleyway full of cats. Like it doesn't make sense to me. It's a lot of freaking fear mongering coming from the art community again. And I think if you just have a solid color or if you just have little designs or even things like this or words or something, it's not only going to make you feel better about your art and make your you know make you feel better about like doing more but it's going to help the look of your sketchbook um what I realized what I like about other people's sketchbooks um I really had to like kind of dismantle what I liked about it not just their art not just their style what do I like about the placement of the stuff in their sketchbook and that was that there wasn't a lot of empty space and that seems so obvious but it wasn't for me you know that 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 is so intensely visually appealing to people especially because I wasn't really doing videos yet I was just watching other people's videos so there wasn't any like thing for me to be like oh it, there can't be one empty page or else you know so it was a big thing for me to see people doing backgrounds on every single one of their drawings and like filling stuff in wherever they could with a color like not having white space here it's very much okay to have white space but when I had little sketchbooks like this there was like I just did there was no no room well there's the white space there was just no like I, and it was fun it was fun to do stuff like this but it was like a job and it took so long and you could never get a video out so you know who cares and I think it'll even make your posts better okay that's another thing you it's gonna look so much better on your profile if it's not just like like um at least what's visually appealing to me when I view when I view people's profiles is a lack of like just the white background if you're posting sketches that's totally cool but I'm talking about finished pieces like I don't post stuff like I didn't I really just stop posting stuff like this because it just doesn't look cool or like you know what I mean that's why you see the things I I deleted this but stuff like that always has something around it but yeah that's a really big tip is to whatever you're doing that's finished put a solid color behind that okay because it's gonna look so much better um one thing here again if you look at all the shiny parts um it's, it's another germa but another thing with the white gel pen is being able to do stuff like this. Like, without the white gel pen, I would have had to literally made, like, air bubbles and then try to make sure that my marker was, like, in a small enough place so that it wouldn't bleed into the white. And then if you didn't have a gel pen, there's nothing you could do to go over the white. So it would just look so messy and you'd have to do so much extra work. So it's really just so cool to get a white gel pen and just draw on top of whatever you want. Same thing with the background of this drawing. The background of this box would have been completely plain pink or it would have been dark circles of dark dark hearts but I wanted to do white and I thought it looked more interesting um so yeah and then another thing with the gel pens is I used a white gel pen for his shorts again something I would have just had to leave white and hope it didn't bleed um but I used a white gel pen here and then a gray gel pen and a dark blue gel pen for the other part of his pants to make it look a very solid dark color unless it hits the light of course but same thing for his watch his watch is also silver so when it hits the light with the gel pen it's gonna shine like silver would which i think is really cool obviously um this sucks a baller okay this absolutely sucks absolute baller but look at this look at this background that took me like 20 minutes to do isn't it so cute that's what i'm gonna talk about <laughs> okay this is this is ugly but the background is cool i did this with a stamp 
a stamp. I don't have the stamp right now, but it's a, like a, a stamp of a skeleton. Okay. Like, you know, like the plastic clear ones that your mom has those. Okay. So one of those that are like at Michael's, you, you know what I'm talking about? And, um, ink. Hold on. This. Okay, guys, I'm actually going to give you a super secret and you better not freaking tell anyone. We have to gatekeep this. Okay. My mom gave me these little things, right? And they are so good for gore, okay? My freaking saw fan art, all of it is because I would take Q-tips, okay? When I was drawing blood on clothes, I would take Q-tips and I would smash them into here. And then I'd use the Q-tip to, like, do blood. And I would just layer and 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 layer. Um until it looked like a torn up bloody shirt you know I'm not saying the paper would be torn up but it would get darker obviously and it if you want to make someone look like they got shot in the shoulder like adam did and saw you know you just keep layering and you make it really dark in the middle and it looks people ask me all the time how do you get it to look like that how do you get it to look like real blood oh my god it looks like real blood and it's not with a marker it's not with anything like that literally ink like stamp ink another thing i did was using gouache paint it wasn't like real gouache paint it was like knockoff or whatever and it was thick though so when i put it on here it wasn't like acrylic paint where it was laying on top it was like chunky you know like like it has texture and that's what i like because it looks like real again it looks like real blood so yeah i always thought the background to that was really cool um, and then I didn't have to draw any skeletons because I used a stamp, which made it look a lot more like kind of professional, you know. This is kind of me showing you how to do stuff that digital artists could do on their tablet, but I'm showing you how to do it on paper. That's the end of that sketchbook, and so far it's been like an hour. And now I'm gonna have to go listen to myself be pretentious about gel pens, um, for another hour. So, um, Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you learned or got anything from this video. It's gonna be really sad if um, I couldn't do that for you. But, you know, I hope this inspired you to go email these companies and tell them to give me money. But I wouldn't tell you to do that. I would not tell you to do that. You would have to be inspired to do that. And then it wouldn't be my fault because I didn't tell you to do that. But it wouldn't be bad if you did. Um. <laughs> the next video I'm like sponsored by a hoo hoo Artuza. I don't even know if I want a Copic sponsorship. Cause girl, my entire life, you made me feel horrible. And now you wanna come back and act like nothing ever happened? Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm like the Nicki Minaj of the art community. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um subscribe, but I wouldn't like the video, but I wouldn't and dislike this video because I know I sure did. Bye, I love you.